Good morning, guys. It's uh, it's dreadfully early, but <laughs> I just woke up. Uh, anyways, it's uh, it's been a while since I did a video, uh, and uh, I think it's time, you know, to show a little progress because we are making progress. It's just that you know, if it's not COVID, then it's energy issues. If it's not energy issues, then I have deadlines, so I'm trying to allocate as much time as I as I can, uh, and I only have the weekends, which is you know the way it's been since we started. So, yeah. Anyways, we are moving ahead, so uh, I'm just going to show a little bit of where we are. So yeah, so the delegates, uh, the delegates have kind of been in place for a while now uh it's sort of the visual the visual glue that's missing uh so the idea is that you can select the widget or, or or the form but yeah select the widgets delegates and for example a click delegate and then when you double click here then the injection code is supposed to you know kick in uh so that's where i am now i have just added the uh uh the, the click events so to speak to the to the list box it's not a list box it's basically a panel with uh, the tons of uh, child elements so it's not a matter of you know just uh, item on click it, it's not like that uh it might look like that but it's it's not like that it's uh the delegate rows communicate with the container using interfaces uh, so I had to do a little bit of scaffolding there, but yeah, so let's have a look at things. So here you see the handler for the interface call, which comes from the item. And then we eventually end up firing off an event. So yeah, it's, it's wiring. Uh, here I have the event handlers. This is the main form of the IDE. So this is where I need to capture, you know, that somebody has double clicked on a delegate. Something needs to happen. Uh, that's where we get to the injection code. Uh, inject handler four, which I have been working on uh, yesterday. Uh, well, two days uh, between <laughs> between my work. Uh, not really supposed to do that, but yeah. Anyways. Uh, Injecting code is not as simple as you might think. Uh, I wrote a little bit about that because um, we can't just, you know, blindly inject uh, an event handler, you know, just anywhere in the unit. It has to be uh, has to be in the same class, etc. So to do that, we have to scan the abstract symbol tree. We have to find the class. Once we find the class, we have to look at the members. Then we need to find a, a protected section or a public section. Uh, then we can inject uh, the procedure there. Uh, and then we need to go down to the implementation section and then do the same thing there with an empty empty procedure that, you know, is prefixed with the class, etc. blah, 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 so, it, so that it will compile. Uh, and then finally, when that is done, we, uh, the editor has to sort of move to that position, you know, just like Delphi when you double click uh, an event handler. But yeah, so so that's where we are now. So I've started up, you know, getting getting a hold of the widget that has the delegate, then moving into the AST. Uh, I get the form class, moving on from the form class into the um, uh, into the AST to find, you know, the context. So this is where I am right now, going through the context, because each element of the code. Uh, doesn't matter if it's a procedure, if it's a class, if it's a, a subsection, if it's a begin end section, for example, all of those have a context and the context is always, you know, the parent, the parent in which something has meaning. So I have to sort of navigate through those, figure out where things are, and then I can extract the simple position, which is, uh, you know, the, the position in the source code. Then we can change the source code and then we can save the changes. So yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit of fiddly work, but we'll get there. Uh, 
I've also updated the, uh, or I am updating, the, the, you know, the website. We have sort of a presentation websites, and uh, I noticed that somebody on Reddit had uh, had commented that, uh, oh, is it uh, vaporware? Nothing is happening. We haven't heard anything in two months. Blah blah blah. And apparently, they don't know about you know the Patreon website or the uh, information website. So uh, yeah, it's. Uh, they found the information website, but I think they they got the impression that that's where all the news are is posted, which is not the case. We we post almost daily to the Facebook group, so yeah, this is uh, this is part of the problem. I, I mean, I've underlined in bold italic and underline uh, on the information website where the different things are. You know, this is Patreon, this is Facebook, this is this website. Here are some articles. Despite all this, people don't seem to read it. So uh, yeah, so I'm going to update that with a little bit more clear, uh, clear text, isolating information about Cortex Pascal in a you know a single page, uh, on the same website of course, but in a single single place, uh, and then you know the desktop project in a, in another place, and then also the you know, the licensing would get you know its own page. So that's it's it's very concrete what is what. So I'm hoping to get that out uh, today as well. Yeah. So that's going to be fun. Uh, also, demos. I've started on just a small demo, you know, desktop tests. And I'm going to add a menu that works, Windows. And uh, I'm also going to show how you can have, you know, icons that, uh, yeah, sort of an icon grid. So you can have icons that you can double click on that opens new windows, etc. So eventually, uh, when when the IDE is finished, I can sit down and finally finish the desktop system. That has been, oh, I'm itching to finish that because that's kind of where my passion is. Um, I love Cortex Pascal and everything that we're doing here. It's uh, it's taking shape, and uh, but it's uh, this is a tool. This is something we make in order to make something else. You know, so those two projects will be following uh, you know building up each other as we go along and uh the end the sort of the end game here uh when the, the desktop is finished is to see if we can compile the ide to javascript as well so that everything the entire system runs in the browser um, you can already use you know free pascal from the, the the desktop prototype i made which is pretty cool you know open up a text editor i had a small text editor program write some text and then save that start to free pascal from the web shell and then it would compile it and spit out the javascript for it that was that was pretty nifty yeah so uh that might that might be the fastest way to you know to move the the ide to javascript just uh use free pascal i mean i have nothing against that because whatever works uh i do think that we have a better uh, closer integration with JavaScript and you know the web world, uh, and also generate faster code with Delphi Web Script uh, backend. But uh, hey, whatever works. So yeah, so I'll keep you guys uh, updated on everything, and uh, I'm gonna see if I can get that delegate handler done so that you can click and it will inject the code. Uh, now we have to worry about views in a in a future version. Uh, as you might remember, I, I I add support for views. Now a view is basically uh, a form design without a form. So it basically just takes the design that you have placed on the form, and then you can recreate that on whatever container you want. Like you can take a form design and uh, say that hey, I want want this to be created inside a panel, for example. Uh, and you know, can attach and detach, you know, the different layouts, which makes a lot of sense for mobile applications. For example, where you have you know sliding forms and you want the same options to appear in different places. Yeah, so uh, we can do that later. The, the code is in the RTL already, so it's it's just waiting. But I just want to finish this now. Okay, uh, I'll speak to everybody soon and keep you posted. Cheers.